Hello, Tab Nation. It's Tom with Tab Nation Auto Hotkeys Automation. Feels weird being back in front of the camera. Uh, to you guys, you see me all the time, but I only record every so often. I'll knock out like 10 videos. So to me, it feels like I'm just talking to you guys. But anyway, we're going to be talking today about some MS settings. I've done a video before kind of covering this, but a lot of people really like this. So I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into it. Uh, I mean, not by much and show you a few of uh, ones I thought were very useful. So we're going to be doing this in version one. Here's our code already pulled up and I just added, you know, single instance force. That's just a setting, a directive uh, kind of thing. You know, you don't have to put that in your script. It's always good to, though. Uh, I've done a video on that, so I'm not really going to explain that. Set working directory. You don't need to know that, really. Uh, but one thing I have noticed is some of these commands for MS settings do need admin to automate them. Because, you know, a virus could be out there trying to change your settings. So it really needs admin rights. So we're going to say, if not... And this is basically a built-in variable. A underscore is admin. Well, if we're not running the script as admin, we'll go ahead and let's do it. So let's just run asterisk, run as, and in parentheses, uh, a script full path. And basically, that it's grabbing it from here from set working directory. So it's basically saying wherever the script was that you just launched, go ahead and run it as an admin. And we're done there. So uh, yeah, basically what we're going to be doing is our first one, and I'll show you what it does each step of the way. So our first hotkey is going to be F1. Obviously, it can be whatever you want. And this is Windows Update. So we're basically just using run commands uh, for most of these just to get to the window that we want. Some of these we are going to be sending uh, using sends tabs, enters, that kind of thing. So as you see down here, I'll explain why in a second. So this is pretty simple. This is just going to take you straight to, or uh, let me explain that, ms minus sign settings, little uh, colon here, and then Windows Update. And that's just going to take us to our Windows Update. Let me see if I have the script running. I do not have it running. It's another script. There we go. So as you see, well, if you saw that, I'm not sure if OBS caught that. Um, it asked me to just confirm that I want to run this as an admin. I said yes, and we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and press F1. And as you see, very quickly, it opened Windows Update, and I can just push check for updates if I want to, you know, any information I need here. Uh, you know, it's just it's a faster way versus me pushing the start menu, going to settings, going to Windows Update, or searching for it, or going to Update and Security, going to Windows Update, or searching for it. It's just a faster way for anything you're trying to change in your settings. If you're always changing a certain setting, this is just such a much faster way to get directly to where you need, and that's why I like this so much. Uh, yeah, so right here I have it commented out. I have run... Uh, underscore a win directory system 32 wuapp dot executable which is what basically does the update this is supposed to automatically just do the update where that last screen i would have to push in the button that actually says you know check for updates and say yes i want to update this will is supposed to automatically do that for you but for some reason, at least on my PC, I can't get it to work. When I use this, it does the exact same thing as this for some odd reason. If you guys have the same experiences or this does do what it's supposed to on your PC, you guys try it out. Let me know in the comments below. I'm not sure if it's a version thing or what. That was just really bizarre to me. And then we're just going to put a return there, obviously, because we're done. We got to where we want. We don't want this other code to start running yet. So now we got F2, and this is to clear your keyboard. So here we're using MS settings like above, and we're just saying clipboard. A lot of these are very simple to, you know, update clipboard. So we're going to sleep 3,000 seconds. Um, obviously, on your computer, you can probably just delete this line or make it like 200 milliseconds. Uh, I'm just doing three seconds so that you guys can visually see this a little better versus it just snapping and being done and you guys are like, whoa, what just happened? 
We're going to send tab four times. You'll see why. Sleep 3,000 seconds, or I keep saying seconds, milliseconds. So three seconds, because you divide by 1,000 in case you didn't know. Um, and that's, once again, just so you guys can see it visually. And send enter. So I'm going to go ahead and push F2. It's going to open. It's going to wait three seconds. And as you saw, I had a load. It's going to tab down, as you see there. Oh. So it went to the wrong place there for some reason. Maybe I have the tabs incorrect. Uh, yep. I need... I think that's supposed to be five. I think I messed up there. Yeah, all right, let's launch that again. Sorry about that. All right, now my script is a little stuck there. Let's try that. There we go. All right, let's try that again. And as you see, it tabbed down to where it says clear, and it's going to press enter. And my clipboard is now clear. Obviously, there's probably easier ways to do this, like uh, clipboard equals nothing. But in case for some reason you want to do this way, I'm just showing you. <laughs> uh, but this, this, the reason I did the clear keyboard is because I wanted to show you that. So when you open this, your cursor is automatically focused within the find a setting. So I'm going to mimic what it just did. So it's going to tab five times. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. Now, obviously, my clipboard's cleared, so it should have been right there, but it's not highlightable. So I can actually fix that. There, now, now there's something in my clipboard. One, two, three, four, five. And then it's going to press the Enter key, so I'm going to press Enter. And it cleared my key keyboard. So some of them you're going to have to manually navigate like that. Uh, there are other ways to do it with, like, DLL calls and stuff, but that's another video. This is just if you want to do it this way. But yeah, that is why I am using send commands, is to basically manually navigate. Obviously, I, if I didn't have these here, it would be super fast. So yeah. Number three, or F3. This one is date and time. So for some odd reason on my computer, my date and time will actually get incorrect, even though it's getting it from the internet, it will, for some reason, I, I don't know if it's changing time zones or something, some weird glitch that I get from time to time. It's very rare, but it happens a few times a year where my system clock will be off by an hour, and I got to basically, like, turn off, you know, sync, and then turn it back on, and then it's, for some odd reason, it corrects it. So this one I is the one I would definitely be using a lot just because I have that weird issue. So we're kind of doing the same thing here, run, MS settings, date and time, sleep 3000. Once again, that's just for this video. You can change that or probably even delete some of these. Send, shift, tab, sleep 3000, send space. Uh, space is doing the same thing up here as enter. You can use enter or space to basically press the button or the slider that you're trying to do. And then I'm just going to close when. A, which means active. So whatever the active window is, go ahead and close it for me. That way I don't even have to do that step. So let's do that. So it's going to open that. It's going to do shift, uh, shift tab to go up, which is basically a reverse tab. Push space to turn it off. Push space to turn it back on. My system time would have been correct now. And then it closed it for me. So this is definitely the one I'm going to be using a lot. Next and last is i will include obviously this uh website in the description below i just showed you three right there this site has all of them so it shows you you know how to you know ms settings about activation app features and just to show you how many there are i am going to scroll and this is why i didn't do them all there's a bluetooth one on there i'm sure a lot of people would like to use that wi-fi stuff uh, lots of privacy stuff. I'm not sure much about that. Yeah, I mean, look how much there is. And, and as far as I know, I, this website page might not even have them all. I don't know when the last time this was updated. So there could be more that have been added with updates. Uh, so I'm not sure when this page actually came out. 
I could probably look at it somewhere. Uh, 2022, yeah, it's probably still pretty up to date. So there is a lot to look at. All you do is just find what you want, you know, projecting to this PC. You just grab that MS settings uh, project and you just copy that onto your run. It's as simple as that. All right. If you guys find anything on here that you would definitely pick as your number one thing you would use, let me know in the comments below. I'll give it a try. Just see what people are using. You know, there's even stuff like lock screen. That's probably a pretty cool one uh, to change if you need a uh, uh, change between like your work environment and your home environment. That's something I could see a lot of people using is I want my settings to be different when I'm using my computer for work, but I want my settings to be like this for when I'm just, you know, leisure. And you could have like a script that literally goes in, changes all the different things back from work mode to, you know, home mode or whatever. All right, guys, hope you found this useful and I will see you on the next video. Peace. Thank you.